We'll now continue with section 3.4, discussing variation and multivariable functions. We'll begin with the idea of joint variation. We say that Z varies jointly as X and Y, or that Z is jointly proportional to X and Y if there is a non-zero constant K such that Z is equal to K times X times Y. If Z varies jointly as the nth power of X and the nth power of Y, we write Z is equal to K times x to the n times y to the n. Let's consider an example. The volume of a right circular cylinder varies jointly. So we know that the volume, which we're going to use a v for, varies jointly as the height and the square of the radius. So here are our two variables, height and the square of the radius. Express the relationship in equation form. So if it varies jointly, we're going to use this first expression, z is equal to k times x times y. Now, we will substitute in possibly different letters, but that is the format of the equation that we are trying to write. So, R says that the volume varies jointly. So, I'm going to use the V is equal to K. It varies jointly as the height, so we'll use an H for height. And the square of the radius, so this will be R squared. Now, notice that this is a very basic problem because it only asks us to express the relationship, which we have done in what we have done so far. V is equal to K times H times R squared is the relationship that shows joint variation between volume and height and radius squared. Let's now consider multivariable functions. There are functions that depend on two or more arguments. If a function depends on two or more arguments, it is called a multivariable function. Consider again how the force of gravity F between two objects depends on the masses of the objects and the distance between them. So if we have two objects, we will have two masses. Let's refer to them as m sub 1 and m sub 2. And we'll have a distance, which we'll use the letter d. That distance will be between the two objects. So we know that the force will be equal to the constant of proportionality times mass 1 times mass 2 divided by the distance squared. Now, we want to note that in this equation that the k can be replaced with g, which is the universal gravitational constant. g has been determined to be approximately 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th power And so if we want to, or if it is appropriate for the problem, instead of solving for a k, we can simply use the g in its place. If we are going to use this value for g, we must be sure to measure the masses of the objects in kilograms, and the distance between them must be in meters. So let's consider an example here. Determine the approximate force of gravitational attraction between the Earth and the Moon. 
So we have our two objects, the Earth and the Moon. We can look up that the mass of the Earth is approximately 6.0 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And the mass of the moon is approximately 7.4 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. So we have our m sub 1 and our m sub 2. We also know the distance between these two objects is on average 3.8 times 10 to the 8th power. And so we can use our formula. F is equal to K times M sub 1 times M sub 2 divided by the distance squared. And again, it is probably a good idea, instead of solving for K, it is easier for us to substitute in that universal gravitational constant. So I'm going to use a G right here. All right, so let's plug in what we know. We know that the gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. We know that mass 1 is 6.0 times 10 to the 24th. And we know that our second mass is 7.4 times, make a little room here, Ten to the twenty-second, and we're going to divide that by the distance squared. And we'll definitely need our calculator for this. You'll need to go in and do the calculation on your calculator. And when you do that, you'll come up with a force of two point one times ten to the twentieth power, and that is measured in newtons. And it is this force of mutual attraction that keeps the moon in orbit around the Earth.